Okay, let's try this again. We got a red dot. Um, welcome back to Akron's hottest and fastest growing show, three throw to go. If you're hearing exhaustion in my voice, the, the you are it's true. I'm exhausted. All right, so um, today's discussion is going to be kind of a, a public service announcement, and this is not like this is not a joke. Okay, um, so if you have a middle school boy or a high school age boy, you probably should share them this video with them. Um, mostly just to have this discussion with them, just to get an understanding um, of what the situation is that can that can come up, and just how serious these things are. Um, so as you guys know, I like to report, I like to share the news, but I don't like to be the news. And today we kind of were. Um, I don't like to be the story, as we like to say. Um, so my son's sitting here with me. He does not want to be on camera. It's kind of an embarrassing topic, but at the same time, he wanted to discuss it with the middle school boys and high school boys uh, out in the community. So on Saturday, on Saturday, he experienced a trauma. He got hit in the area. It was in this scenario, it was his toddler sister just did a their horse around, just did a roundhouse and caught him just right. So he got hurt. Right. And that happens when you think about it, that happens quite a bit in gym class. It happens on the soccer field. It happens in basketball. It happens in football. You know, these sort of traumas do occur pretty regularly with boys. And it's one of those things that typically, well, I don't want to say we laugh about it, but we usually do, or it's like, Hey, you'll be fine. And you know, 10 minutes later, they're back on the field. In this scenario, she caught him just right that it aggravated a developing condition that he had that we did not even know existed. I've never even heard of the words that I heard today at the hospital. So long story short, during the course of the week, he was experiencing um, just nausea and dizziness and all kinds of symptoms. And he was vomiting for three days straight. He's vomiting. and and But he, as a parent, we didn't know what was going on because he didn't have any other symptoms. He had no fever. Um, he had nothing that would indicate like a virus or the flu. And so we just treated it like, okay, you know, what are we going to do here? And, and the, the first day we kept him home from school cause we figured he had some sort of stomach flu. The second day I sent him to school on Tuesday and he ended up vomiting halfway through during the day and they sent him home. So I'm, and then the wife's like, okay, well let's get him in the doctor. And at that point I'm calling a doctor. And again, I'm sharing this story with you as a parent. So Bear with me, and it will be a little emotional because today was not fun. Um, so on Tuesday, you know, we call the doctor, get a doctor appointment set up. We go into the doctor. Now I had I he had com been complaining about pain in that area, and he asked me to take a look, and I took a look on what was it Monday? Yeah. Monday, I I took a look, and I mean, what are we looking at, right? It's it just looks like it's supposed to, I guess. So by Wednesday. We got him to the doctor. He threw up at the doctor's office. And at that point, I'm telling her what's going on. And she's like, the symptoms aren't making any sense to us. Because he's been vomiting for three days. And he's dehydrated now. And nothing's making sense. So I started telling her the story about, you know, about what had happened with our daughter. At that point, she took a look. And by this point now, he was swollen. So we got him into uh, the doctor today. They, her, 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 she's like, we need to get a picture. We need to look inside and see what's going on. So they ordered an ultrasound. So we got to the ultrasound this morning. Um, and we went to the ultrasound. We did the, we did the video. Uh, they did the scope. And you know, as a, as a parent, raise your hand out there as a parent, if you've been in these situations where you see something on that TV visually and you just know it doesn't look right. I mean, we've lived enough life as parents now where we can kind of tell when something's broken. And I'm looking at the video and I just, it just doesn't look right. So at that moment, they said, okay, we're going to get these hurried up. They hurried up, we get the screens and they call me to the desk and they say, you need to get your son to the ER immediately. So if you're familiar with Akron Children's, we walk all the way down the one hallway, all the way down, we're walking around. They asked me if they wanted to have a transport and I asked him and he said he was okay to walk. So we hurry on down to the ER. We walk into Children's Hospital ER and we walk up to the desk and, and 
and, and I, I apologize to the lady that was running the ER. God bless you. I'm sorry that, that some lady was yelling at her in front of us. So we had to wait for the lady to finish yelling. And then when she got done, um, I asked her, I, I, I said, Hey, uh, we, we got sent down. Do you have our information? And at that point, um, from the moment we walked into the ER to the moment that we were back in the rooms with doctors hovering around him was probably five or six minutes, mm -hmm. five or six minutes. So Akron Children's must have tagged him with like some sort of an emergency. We were tagged, we were put in triage and we were back in the room in like five minutes. So here's the situation. And this is where the discussion comes into play that you need to share this with your sons. He experienced a trauma on over the weekend, and what it did is it threw into high gear uh, an infection that was going on that we were not even aware of. So if if it's possible that if my daughter had not hit him, we would not know this. We still would not know this was going on. So the issue here is called. You want to say it? Epa, epididymitis. Epididymitis. And, and it's, it's one of these things that you should share with your kid. And it's, it's, it's where children don't go to the bathroom during the day. And it builds up and it causes an infection. So it's one of these things that you need to address with your kid. So tell me about your day at school. Um, well, here's what went on. So I went to... I, Your typical day at school, yeah. I'll, you don't have a chance to go to the bathroom very often. Yeah, I don't because the only real times that I can use the bathroom is first period, he's very lenient. Second period, there's a well, lot and of I, I'm not throwing the school under the bus. The issue is you need to say, um, you need to say, you need to make a point to go to the bathroom during the day. This is a typical issue, I guess, that exists with middle school kids, and they see it all the time. So it's one of the things that, and I, and 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 we're sharing this personally. We're being totally transparent with you right now, and it's one of those things where you you need to consider having this discussion with your kid. They're supposed to go to the bathroom every two to three hours, and we find out today that typically, and my daughter's in the background shaking her head as well, that typically they only go to the bathroom once a day, if that. So. Um, that is our message. That is our message to you. Talk to your kids about going to the bathroom because it is it, it, now he has an infection and, and, and we're at a point now where he came this close to potentially losing a testicle today. And that's an embarrassing and, and a serious discussion all at the same time. So that's our message to you. Um, that's all. That's all. And again, uh, Jessica's weighing in right now. So talk to your kids about it. Uh, talk to your kids about going to the bathroom at school because this is a, 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 obviously a problem. I never even knew this existed, and now we've been through this today. He's still not out of the woods yet. We've got another week before the uh, before the um, the antibiotics will do what they're supposed to do, and we'll still need to keep him out, out, out of all activities because at any given moment, if that thing were to twist and flip, he is now in, a, in an absolute... Uh, emergency where they have according to everything that we read and everything that they've told us there's five to six hours that you have to fix that problem before the person can actually lose that and the pain would just immobilize the pain is immobilized but the point is this is our public service announcement have this discussion with your kids it's embarrassing but at the same time it's worth having that talk um thank you guys for tuning in and that's all i got man Take care, folks. Have a good night, everybody.